their YouTube. Jimmy with two of the top grain. And since we uh, had that video yesterday with uh, different kinds of rigging, I figured I'd go over uh, wire rope a little bit more. This is just some junk that I had here at the house. It's, it came off a cheap little 12 volt winch. But it's wire rope nevertheless, and it has the same qualities as the wire rope we use as far as sizing and whatnot. So I figured I would talk a little bit about the different pieces and puzzle pieces of this wire rope stuff. So I have taken this apart at the end, and I know that this is, now I know this is 6 by 19 uh, quarter inch galvanized wire rope. So what do the numbers mean? So six, the six is, there's six strands around a core. Each one of these strands, which this is a strand, is comprised of a certain number of wires. So in this particular rope, the 19 stands for the number of wires in the strand. So six by 19, six strands, 19 wires in each strand, wrapped around a core. So I hope that's clear as mud. Um, also this is galvanized and typically galvanized wire rope isn't as strong as uh, like what we, what we would use for uh, sling material. But I'm going to show you guys also how to uh, twist up a Flemish eye. And I, there's a couple different ways to do it and I'll show you both ways to do it. And then also and this is going pretty deep in wire rope. And I'm sure there's a few people that will understand what I'm talking about. And I'm going to have to get behind my viewfinder to make sure you guys can see this. So this is right hand regular lay rope. There's also left hand regular lay rope. And what that is, instead of this, the wire being wound this way around the rope, it would be wound this way around the rope. The regular lay portion of that is how are the strand or the wires oriented into the strand. So this is regular lay rope. They also have right hand lang lay rope, which instead of the wires, I don't know if you guys can see this, but instead of the wires being oriented along the longitudinal portion of the rope, we can see they kind of all form a straight line, the individual wires. What it is is the wires kind of spiral around the rope. So that would be right hand Langley rope. And then they have left hand Langley rope, which is the same concept. It just is spiraled to the left around the core. They make it even more confusing by adding lang lace to it. And then there's also rotation resistant rope. So there's, there's all kinds of different kinds of rope. They have synthetic core. They have like a sisal, sisal, I think that's how you pronounce that, yeah, sisal. So it's basically like a fiber rope. It's a fiber core. And then they wrap the cable around it. And I apologize if I sound kind of tired, it's a little early, but had nothing else to do on Saturday morning. Figured I'd go over some of this stuff with you guys. So yes, this is quarter inch, six by 19, right lay rope, galvanized. Now onto the fun stuff. So we're just gonna use a pick to pop some of this open. And typically you can just, this small stuff, you can just twist it open. I mean, it, once you get it started, it comes right open. But the goal here is to not separate the individual wires from the strand. We just want to separate the strands off of the core. So you can do this one at a time. You can do this two or three at a time, whatever. It'll come apart pretty easily. And I'm not showing you guys this so you can make your own steel chokers or if you need to make a loop on the end of your crane rope. 
this is not what this is used for. But I have a lot of loggers and whatnot that watch my channel and probably some off-roaders. And if you're out in the wilderness and you break your cable and you've lost, <laughs> I even cut the end of this cable off, and you've lost this connection, I'm gonna show you how you can redo this connection out in the field. And get yourself going again. I know the logger, loggers use a lot of skidders that have winches in the back. I know that because logger weights skitter skitter rope looks terrible. This is one way to do it. You can undo all of them off of the core. This one I actually kind of separated some wire off that strand or off the core strand so we're gonna put that back on in a second. you guys can see what I'm doing well enough. I'm not sitting behind my viewfinder and I don't have a camera person so now we're going to try to twist these back up. And they should fall back into place. Okay so we've got all six strands separated from the core of the rope. To make this Flemish eye and this is like I said this is one way of doing it you bring your core, actually I'm going to separate three off of one side of the core and three off the other side, if I can, you get it close. So now we got three strands on the left side, three strands on the right, right side, and we got the core in the center. So we take the core, and I probably didn't run enough rope out here, we're going to tuck the core back down in here a little bit. And you got to be careful doing this. You can you can run this stuff through your fingers pretty easy. I'm a little out of practice. I haven't done this in a while. time it's going a little better at least this first one is and I'm tr like I said I'm trying not to kink this I've got some other rope in the way some other strands because if, if you kink it it'll it'll be a bulge it won't lay down right your other ropes won't lay on top of it correctly okay so we got the first one around the core see if we can get another one around it. And in case you're wondering, this is a better alternative to just looping the cable back on itself and throwing clamps on it. Uh, cable clamps have about an 80% holding power, 80% efficiency on your wire rope, where a Flemish eye is uh, about 90%. And sometimes that extra 10% makes a difference. Okay, we got our core back down there. Just gonna keep rolling around it here. The smaller rope's a little more difficult to work with just in the simple fact that you don't want to kink it and it's pretty easy to kink. Okay, so now we got half our braids up one side of it, or half of our strands up one side of the rope. And this one actually needs to be adjusted a little bit. But we should be able to work it around there pretty easy. So now we're gonna take the other half and we're gonna go up the other side.
that one was still a little messed up. So we're going to see if we can get it worked around there and lined up. Okay, that's better. A little better. Almost. Now we're going to go back up the other side. Some of my wires are coming undone. Twist the other way. did that one. So as you can tell this actually takes a little bit of practice to get it just perfect. This is essentially how they make steel chokers. The only difference is they will swedge a collar on it at this connection point. One more. And I've got a little bit of a messed up spot right here. Let's see if we can line that out. For all intents and purposes, that's that's what you end up with. It's a little loose down here on the bottom because I, I got one of them not quite seated where it's supposed to be. But to fix it, I'd have to unwrap it all. But that's, that's what you'll end up with. Now you can pull this together. And actually, with the way it sits right now, it will hold basically the strength of the cable. But you can pull this together with some heat shrink. You could put a cable clamp on it. I think once you put a cable clamp on this connection, you would probably weaken it right here. Um, but if they were making this into a choker, you would swedge this with a collar and it would hold all of that intact, like so. Now, that's one of them. Let's see if I can do the other, the other method. these apart again but instead of leaving six of them loose actually I'm gonna probably have to get all six of them loose and then put three and three together three on the core. I'm going to 
take three off to the side. But I'm going to leave those three twisted together. Well, we're going to run with it. Okay, so I've got I've got three wires up one side. I've got three wires on the other with the core. You can take those three. Actually, you can actually bring them down past. And then you take these three. So far, I've got a little little bit of a booger down here on the bottom, but you guys get the, the gist of it. And here's where it gets a little more difficult doing it this way. So if you can't come not going to lay right. It actually did a little bit. But there's a second one. If you practice that, it wouldn't be much easier, I promise. And then there's even a third one, and I've never done it. But uh, heck, why not? Let's try it. together as I unwind them. Okay, you can see I've got a pretty long tail. We're going to actually go a little bit further. I've got three and three again. So I've got the core in this side, three strands on the outside. We're gonna bring it down, we're gonna leave a tail hanging out here. About the length of the loop. I'll show you why in a minute. I gotta go back up the other side, Jimmy. Otherwise we would just put the rope right back together. this in the magic spot this rope will wind right up this other side but you may have to adjust your tail a little bit till you find the spot that it likes to fit that looks like it's going to be pretty close so we got that tail sticking out the back side
Like I said, I've never done this one. This one seems to be so far to be a little bit easier. The true test will be when we get down to the bottom. I don't have much room to poke it through there. All right, we're going to shoot for one more. Hopefully it doesn't kink it. Okay, so we got one more on there. Now, you should be able to, let's see if I can do this. So now we've got it all braided back. I got a little, I must have had something a little bit out of place right here because it's raised some. I don't know that that would affect the structural integrity of it. But this is what you end up with. So you've got the rope coming up, it splits both sides, and then the tail comes back down and is woven together on this back side. If you have a cable clamp, you could clamp it off with a couple cable clamps or even just one and you have a 90 percent or a rope or a eye that is 90 percent as strong as the rope itself now when you clamp this and i don't have any quarter inch cable clamps here i'd show you the saddle of the clamp goes on this side of the rope this is your live side of the rope this tail gets the u-bolt so you have your saddle here you bolt through here and the nuts will be on the back side and then you tighten those evenly. On this quarter inch rope you could probably just slip some heat shrink over this, cinch it down with a heat gun and uh, you'd be in good shape. So that's the three different ways of braiding a Flemish eye. You can tell I'm a little bit rusty, I haven't done it for a while. But if you're out in the woods, your winch cable breaks and you need to put that back on that is how you do it do not use these for lifting don't hoist things with these when they build a choker they uh, like I said they switch a collar on it and then they proof test it afterwards they've got a big apparatus they put the choker in they put X amount of force on it depending on the size of the choker and they proof test it afterwards these aren't proof tested so do not lift with these, but you can use these on your skitter cables. You can use it on your winch cables for, uh, you know, recovery winches, not hoisting winches, but recovery winches. There's the old tutorial for the day.